Alright, welcome to day six. Before we get started setting up our initial wits out in the near field, I've got to fix some of this SBO phase offset that I've been utilizing in PMDT. For a baseline, this is too much to be using right here. Negative 16.4 degrees, and on transmitter two, I'm using a negative 23 degrees. In order to cut, so we're gonna have to cut that out of one of our feed lines, and because I've, it's uh, negative, I've delayed basically the SBO feed line. I've made it longer. That means we're going to cut our CSB, uh, core CSB feed line by actually 19.5 degrees because one transmitter is at 23 degrees, the other one's at 16 degrees. I'm going to find the, the middle ground between those two transmitters. So with a spread of 7 degrees, I'm going to take 7, divide that by 2, and I've got 3 and a half degrees. And then I just add that into the lower number, 16. It gives me a 19.5. That's how much I want to cut out of the core CSB feed line. And so using our divide by four, simple math, tells me the cut's about 4.8 inches on the core CSB feed line. And I've got just enough, I think, to make that cut on those feeds down below. And then that should result in me being able to reduce these numbers and still have correct phasing out in the field. Okay, we just cut off the coarse CSB cable by this much. What, what side are you on? Okay, 150 side. Yeah, we would. I need to turn the transmitter on. Alright. Walk, uh, walk me to zero. I'm starting out with zero degrees in SPO phase offset transmitter one. Talk me to two bouncing three in the 150. Okay, made an adjustment. Perfect. Okay, two in the 150. That's good. That's good. That's what we're looking for. And so the other side we should have a two in the 150 when you get to the 90 side. I'm now sitting at a positive 1.5 on transmitter one and a negative 2.7 on transmitter two, which is far better than what we had. And so when we get to the other side, the other half width out there in the far field, uh, which will be the 90 side for us, I'm expecting about a two and a 150, a good balance between both sides at these, utilizing these numbers here in SBO, or here on SBO phase offset. There you go, that's perfect, just like that, every time. Let's check the Bloody. clearance phase. Okay. So that completes uh, course SBO phasing. I'm going to go ahead and put it in normal. Technician's going to come out, come in from the far field into the near field, and we're going to look at our half widths, and we're going to get the widths set up for references by adjusting our SBO powers. And out here we're looking for about a 152, 155 on those half widths. At least that's what my reference is. But we're going to go ahead and combine those up. I'll show you in just a moment how we're going to set the widths up. Okay, we're ready to set up our initial widths, and I'm on clearance only. The technician's in the near field at the two degree points, and he's on the 150 hertz side for transmitter one. I've got a 158. He's gonna go to the other side, the 90 side, and he's gonna give me a reading. And I'm looking to adjust my clearance SBO power for a, com a combination of 310 DDM. 150 side is 161 in the 150. 161 in the 150. We got a 161 in the 150 combined for a 311, and that's close enough for to 310. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to do the same thing for transmitter two. That completes the clearance width adjustment. We're going to go course and clearance transmitters on. And now we're going to set up our course width at the half width points in the near field. So for transmitter one under waveforms. Get that 150, verify 150. 150 and the 90. 150. Let's do 153. Okay. 150. Made an adjustment. 152. 152. Made an adjustment. 153. Okay. 153. 153. Yeah. So we're going to go to the other side and check out our results. One, five, five. One, five, five. 
Okay, for transmitter two on the 150 side, we got a 155. The other side, the 90 was a 153, so we got a 308 on transmitter two. And let's see what we got on transmitter one. 155. Five. And that's a 155 five five transmitter five. one, so 308 on both transmitters. And that's going to get our facility references for this localizer. Now that we completed setting up our widths at the half width for course and two degree points for clearance, we can go ahead and begin a full 35 degree to 35 degree ground check sweep. All right, Ryan. Okay, let's join up with the technicians in the near field to start those ground checks. Okay, the best way to do this is to start out on the center line and just walk one of the directions, 90 side or 150 side out to the 35. Uh, stay on that transmitter, recording the numbers each time. And then when we reach the end, we'll change transmitters and come back the other way. Give me a reading. 337 in the 150. I wanted to just take a moment to talk about some of the setup and settings that we're using to do our ground checks out here. First, you can see I'm holding it on this monopole. And this helps us make sure we've putting it exactly on each ground checkpoint. It should have been on a ground checkpoint. I'm not standing on anything. <laughs> okay. Pretend there's a ground checkpoint there. The next thing is the antennas. There's two types of antennas that come with the kit, one for localizers and one for glide slopes. For localizers, we're using the longer dipoles, as you can see here, and that's a function of the carrier frequency. As far as the two most important settings go for ground checks, it's the channel and then the DDM setting. So for channel, we just make sure we're set up at station assigned frequency, and for us, that's 111.9 megahertz. And then after that, just make sure that the antenna is plugged into the localizer input, as you can see there and that uh, we're using the DDM function uh, to actually measure the DDMs. And one final and very important note when operating the PIR, always make sure the battery's charged before you get started. We just finished walking all the way out to the 35 degree point on the 150 hertz side. Now we're looking at transmitter two and just walking back. And for center line, we're reading a one in the 150. One in the 150, center line, one in the 150. Bouncing zero. Bouncing zero. I think it's one in the 150. And at 20 degrees on the 90 side. We're reading in. 291 in the 90 on the 90. So we ran into a little problem out here. We can't find all of our ground checks and a PIR is just about useless if you don't have a ground checkpoint in the near field or if they're missing. So here's a good one right here. It's easily identifiable for us. That's our 20 degree ground checkpoint. And we're having a hard time finding the 25. And so sometimes those get over time buried under soil, sediment, maybe the really thick grass has hit it. Best you can do is maybe get a metal detector and try to find them that way or you could request a survey. Um, obviously the former is a lot easier to do with a shovel and a metal detector. But having a full set of ground checks that are easily identifiable is important to being able to maintain a localizer to facility references. Get my rear. Yeah, it's about, it's about time for the bowling alley. Yeah. Okay, the transmission side of the localizer is now completely done. Next, we need to move on to the monitoring side, and this is going to be what monitors the center line of the localizer. And we have to align that just like we did the transmit, but we're going to do that 
all back here behind the DU on the other side. That's where everything is recombined. And we're going to cut each cable uh, to basically get a representation coming back into that board of center line, just like we cut the far field out there for center line. Now we're ready for initial monitor cable lengths. Using our field fox, we're connected to the coarse SBO input port on the distribution unit and shooting through the distribution unit, the transmit cables, the antenna, and the internal monitor coupling in there, and back down the monitor return cables that are arriving on the CU side of this white box. And for port two, we're just gonna connect to each monitor return uh, cable. We're starting out on seven left. That's where we took a zero reference on the vector voltmeter. So zero degrees and zero dB on the amplitude. And then we're just gonna move across the array, capture all that data, the phase measurements, and then cut the left sides to the shortest cable that we find. We just finished our initial monitor cable lengths. Now we're going to do our monitor null procedure. We cut all of our left sides to the shortest cable, and now we're gonna cut the rights. So I've got pair three up, and it's just pair three. Uh, the PAR is hooked up to CSB output, and I'm measuring, an, uh, the transmitters are in normal, by the way, and I'm measuring an 18 and the 150 on the PAR. So I'm going to put an elbow in on the left side, or three left, and that's going to move this closer to the center line. And from the current position that we're reading now to the new position that it moves to, there's going to be a difference that we'll plug into our spreadsheet here to get the calculation of how much to cut, and uh, that cut will be on three right. I don't always cut the full amount on the first try. I usually cut a little bit short of that because you can never stretch a cable or you can never make a cable longer. So it's better to cut a couple times than to cut too much. And the calculation doesn't always work out. Uh, so I cut short and that's why I ended up with that three in the 150. I just made an additional cut of a qu uh, quarter of an inch and that gave me a result of 0 .000 DDM and that makes it perfect for pair three. So pair three is complete. Now we'll move on to the next pair. Okay, we just finished all the individual pair monitor nulls. Then we hooked everything up for composite and the resulting composite with all pairs connected and each individually cut is a composite or combined of one in the 150. And it's gonna work well for us. So I'm gonna record that. And that is a wrap for today, day six.